students welcome back today we are going to learn about de broglie hypothesis of matter wave some important considerations of de broglie hypothesis and dv's derivation for the wavelength of the matter wave now in this first point we are going to learn de broglie hypothesis of matter wave we discussed earlier about the duality of matter and the radiation the concept of matter wave like wave that was proposed by louis de broglie and it is referred as a de broglie hypothesis de broglie hypothesis is related with matter and wave every moving particle of the matter is always associated with a wave therefore we give the statement the wave associated with particle of matter is called as matter wave or de broglie wave whose wavelength is related by a relation lambda is equal to h by mv or h divided by p where h is the planck's constant m is the mass of the particle and v is the velocity of the particle now here we are explaining some important considerations for the de broglie hypothesis there are three considerations in that the first one is nature laws symmetry we observe many symmetries in the nature the nature manifest itself in the two fundamental forms of like radiation and matter these two forms are mutually symmetrical there are many other symmetries in the nature for example the leaves of most of the trees have symmetric shape human body is exactly symmetrical and also the other examples in the nature which show symmetry here the radiant energy possess the dual nature that is wave and particle and matter and also possess dual nature that is particle and wave the second consideration is the close parallelism between mechanics and optics mechanics and optics are the two major branches of physics both concerning about matter and radiation or light there are some similarities between these two branches in mechanics there is a principle called the principle of least action about the motion of the object which states that the moving particle always chooses that path for which the action is minimum that is the integral of the momentum over the path is zero similarly in optics there is another principle that is the principle of fermat principle of the least time it states that a ray of light always chooses that path for which the time of transit is minimum that is the integral of refractive index over the path is zero therefore here these two branches there more both have the close similarities in the third 
there is a bose theory of the atomic structure according to the quantum theory bohr proposed that the particle like electron in atom move in definite quantum orbit without radiating energy such orbits are stable non radiating orbit these stable orbits for electrons are characterized by the integer rule that is as the molecular moves in non radiating orbits and if it satisfy the integer rule then the moving electron must be in the form of the wave in the most of the phenomena in physics are governed by the integer rules for example interference stationary waves etc these phenomena satisfy the integer rule and therefore both these phenomena are explained on the basis of wave next we have to derive the relation of the matter wave here we consider the moving electron satisfy a standing wave pattern and it varies periodically the periodically varying quantity psi is a function of x and t and it is given by relation psi is equal to psi 0 sin 2 pi nu 0 t 0 where psi 0 and nu 0 are the amplitude and frequency at instant t 0 now we use the standard equation according to the lorentz transformation equation that equation is based on the special theory of relativity and give it gives the relation between the time and the space coordinates as t0 is equal to t minus vx by c square divided by under root 1 minus v square by c square here this t0 we have to substitute in equation number 1 and therefore the equation we rewrite as psi is equal to psi 0 sin 2 pi this new 0 we have to substitute as it is t 0 that value is new 0 divided by under root 1 minus v square by c square into t minus vx by c square here we use one standard form of the wave equation that equation is in the form y is equal to a sin omega t minus k x where a is the amplitude omega is the angular frequency k is the propagation constant in that equation omega and here this k that we have to replace by 2 pi by t and 2 pi by u t u therefore the equation becomes a sin 2 pi by t into bracket t minus x divided by u now we have to explaining here how the a sin 2 pi by t into bracket t minus x by u we getting here here omega angular frequency which is defined as 2 pi nu frequency term you know it is 1 by t therefore the omega we, omega we simplify 2 pi divided by t and the other term that is k that is 2 pi by lambda where the lambda is velocity divided by frequency that is u by nu therefore we have to simplify again nu 1 by t and k is equal to ut this value directly we substitute in the k term becomes as 2 pi by ut where u is the phase velocity of the particle and k is the propagation with the constant now we compare 
this equation earlier equation 3 with this equation number 4 and we rewrite the coefficient of t and coefficient of the x here the first is 1 by t the directly from the definition we write 1 by t is related to frequency nu that nu we getting from the equation 3 and 4 nu 0 divided by under root 1 minus v square by c square similar the coefficient of x we get 1 by u is equal to v by c square or simplified as u is equal to c square divided by v we substitute these terms in the next equation before that we use einstein's mass energy relation e is equal to m0 c square where m0 is the rest mass c is the velocity of the light that energy which is equal to h nu 0 according to the Planck's law h is the Planck constant nu 0 is the frequency at rest from that relation we separate nu 0 that is equal to m0 c square by h this nu 0 we have to substitute in the earlier equation therefore the equation 5 becomes nu is equal to this nu 0 we have to substitute in here m0 c square divided by h under root 1 minus v square by c square again we simplify new term by using another mass velocity relation that relation we have to get from special theory of relativity that relation is m is equal to m0 divided by under root 1 minus v square by c square therefore here m0 divided by 1 minus v square by c square we directly substitute for m and therefore the new becomes frequency term becomes m c square divided by h as you know the frequency and phase velocity term then we use directly the definition of the wavelength of the matter wave lambda is equal to velocity divided by frequency therefore we substitute the value of the u c square divided by v and nu m c square divided by h from equation 7 numerator and denominator part we get simplified and lambda term becomes equal to h divided by m v or other relation in terms of momentum the wavelength of the matter wave lambda is equal to h divided by p and that relation gives the day relation for de Broglie wave or matter wave we have to interpret the equation a as lambda is equal to h by mv here m is the mass of the particle v is the velocity and h is the Planck constant here the mass if the we use the lighter particle and the heavier particle how the lambda changes that we just write here for heavier particles means the mass is higher then lambda becomes smaller but for heavier particle lambda is very very small and it is not observable or measurable as m is very smaller means the mass of the particle likes electron proton neutron the wavelength is very very It is to be measurable and it was detected experimentally. Now we give some examples. In the first example, we choose macroscopic object 
like marble ball of mass 20 gram and once it moves with velocity 10 meter per second then the wavelength associated with the moving ball we have to calculate by using the relation lambda is equal to h divided by mv where h is the Planck's constant its value is 6.6 .6 into 10 raise to minus 34 and m mass of the marble ball we express in terms of the SI unit 20 into 10 raise to minus 3 kilogram into velocity 10 we have to simplify numerator and denominator we get wavelength of the marble ball is 3.3 into 10 raise to minus 33 meter this wavelength is very very small and sometimes it is not observable or measurable in second example for microscopic object like electron of mass 9.1 into 10 raise to minus 31 kilogram as that electron gets accelerated from rest by given potential 100 volt then the wavelength associated with the moving electron is calculated by using the another relation lambda is equal to h divided by under root twice m e into v now how we get that equation we just see here as kinetic energy of the electron half mv square that electron gets accelerated therefore that energy becomes equivalent to e into v we simplify half mv square equal to ev here half mv square we write half m square v square divided by m that equal to ev therefore m square v square is equal to twice m e v therefore m v equal to under root twice m e v that m into v is the momentum that momentum we directly substitute lambda is equal to h by p therefore lambda is equal to h divided by under root twice m e v here we substitute the constants h mass of the electron charge on the electron and v is the potential that is 6.6 .6 into 10 raise to minus 34 divided by under root 2 multiplied by 9.1 into 10 raise to minus 31 kilogram the mass of the electron charge on the electron 1.6 into 10 raise to minus 19 coulomb and v accelerating potential 100 volt simplify numerator and denominator we get 1.22 angstrom this wavelength is comparable to the atomic distance between the two atom and that wavelength can easily detect experimentally here in this lecture we discuss all about de Broglie hypothesis some consideration about the de Broglie hypothesis and examples the next article we continue in the next lecture thank you